and, and it was it was genuine. It wasn't like you know you know like a lot of politicians just shake hands. And, and, I mean, it was just totally genuine that she got to do it the way she did. It, it was just. Yeah, that big, it was a magical time. It was just a magical, magical time for, for all of us. Um, you know, I mean, everything's got its life cycle. Um, and, um, but it's, it changed, it changed my life, changed. I think anybody who was involved, it just changed our, our lives for the positive. Everyone say yay? Yay! yay. yay. <laughs> Desserts that long, but I do remember Miss Desserts very well. Uh, no, I have a very booming voice. I was, I was, in, I was in theater too. Dean would be mad. Get your hug. I just, I, there are three, three episodes. One was the chocolate marquee tasting, whether or not to put the sugar, sugar lies violet. On the like center <laughs> because it was like a dollar more and it looks to like have it on there, and we're like debating for hours. <laughs> and I, I just remember that episode. I also remember the key lime pie episode oh, yes. Yes. where we were tasting key lime pies. I don't know for weeks. I don't know. It just felt like that. And then one of the most important um, episodes was um, I was pregnant and. Um, trying to sell desserts while, you know, I was pregnant. <laughs> and I had parked the car and I, I off of Amos Avenue and I tripped and fell. And I remember going, I'm gonna cry. I remember going into the office and telling everybody what had happened. And it was like, we're gonna call the doctor, we're gonna call Mitch, we're gonna get you, well, you know, don't worry, don't worry, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine, you're fine. And I just couldn't, um, I'll never forget the love that was there, um, the concern for my welfare. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And then um, uh, the baby lived, our daughter lived. <laughs> she's she's got her own baby. Yeah, she's got her own baby. Oh but the other part prior to the pregnancy was the actual wedding. And Gary and Jeff, baked a, was it how many tiers? Great American chocolate. I don't know, three or four tier chocolate, um, great American chocolate cake as our wedding gift. They were in the back of their truck and they're holding it together <laughs> so to keep it, you know, from falling and delivered it to the center club. And it was one of the highlights of our wedding. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, come Bri. Yeah. Or Fitz? Brian or Bri Bri? Depending on who. Fitz. Fitz. That's right. So I started at Mrs. Desserts on 9 11 81. Wow. And. He was three. <laughs> I looked like I was dead. Um, yeah, you never shaved. I still don't. Twice Wait, a week. Twice you a had week. you had the same can of of uh, shaving That's cream right. for like six years. Right. <laughs> it rusted out. <laughs> so I started there. I was interviewed on the steps outside Amos Avenue by Gary, and the next day I was there, and. Um, Miss Desserts means a lot to me, mainly because I met my wife there. So my, my wife was uh, working on the uh, pastry table. No, I was and, making shortbread hard And doing shortbread hard cookies. When I actually met when you walked And um, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's, I learned a lot. I started there when I was 18. and. Um, and I was made a manager when I was 19. 
<laughs> the, only reason I was, the only reason I was made a manager is because I was at night, and what made you a manager was if if the guys came to you because their mother was calling and wanted to know what time we were getting off that night, I usually could give the best estimate. <laughs> so, like, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I give him a manager. So, um, you also got to remember, he was the biggest guy there. Yeah, that's true. And and I was the only one of the only white guys there too. So I I had a very uh, uh, I, I I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned how to play tonk there. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah, this is late night on the pastry table. Um, but there was uh, there was uh, one interesting uh, incident that happened to me there. Um, once I became a manager, I was all about, you know, all right, we gotta, we gotta get this production done, and, and, and I remember these were the times, at the very beginning, these were times where you literally wrote the customer's name on the box, and you had all the boxes stacked up, and we would just fill the boxes with pies and whatever, and that's how we did it. Now, you know, you wouldn't even think of it, but, um, First, we made the boxes. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, you made the boxes at the beginning of the shift. And you made and you filled muffin tins before the shift. And, um, but we had a, uh, a lady there. And her name was Annie. And she was, she was God. She was God. But, me not really understanding and knowing, all right, we got production and everything, and I'm like, all right, well, you should be frosting this many cakes in this oh. amount of time and everything. So I think I had mentioned to Annie to, like, speed it up a little bit. <laughs> so oh, no. so uh, that got back to Dean, <laughs> and she started talking to me, and then she slapped me in the face. <laughs> And then she hugged me. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, realized that. Um, I remember that. This was. Yes. This was the production crew here, and Annie was over here. <laughs> and whatever she produced was extra. <laughs> and she was the only one that did the hazelnut roll. Yes. She was the only one that was allowed to roll. Oh wow. I love she those. was the only one. And, uh, so that was that was uh, awesome. Also, you mentioned um, how she learned uh, food sanitation. Well, <laughs> Jerry and I were talking earlier, and we would have a trash can, a brew container about this tall, full of brand mix, brand batter, and um, it would be made. You know, when the mixer made it, it would be made, but it wouldn't be used right away. So what would happen is the liquid would settle to the bottom. Oh, oh yes. Oh, right. So, <laughs> me being a tall guy with long arms, oh. and one other guy, one other guy, George, oh, Lord. we were the only ones that could yes. get down, <laughs> really get in there and mix it up. <laughs> That's what we did. The only way you can do it. You know? No gloves. No gloves. We used to uh, crack a lot of eggs until one of these guys, Gary, found somebody that uh, made this uh, egg cracking machine that was based on centrifugal force. But if you really think about it, where's that egg coming out of? <laughs> so now we're throwing all these eggs in this centrifugal force thing where the shells go up against the sides and the liquid comes out. And then we started getting notices that these machines were illegal. Oh, Gary, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so then we had to go back to, and this is, I remember a pecan pie batter got 168 eggs. Carrot cake I remember was 128. The quiche batter was 256 eggs. Carrot cake was 120. And, and I would, as the manager, we would have to prep eggs for the next day. And we'd have to know how much we were making. So I'd put, I'd write on a little piece of paper, 168, 256. And everybody at the end of the night had to go in. Please not 256. <laughs> And we would have to, and we would put them in the uh, sour cream containers. 
for the next day. And uh, I, uh, <coughs> I've been a manager since I was 19. And I started at Ms. Desserts. And I learned how to talk to people there. And I've been a manager ever since. So it, uh, I, I don't think there was too many days that went by that I didn't think about my time at Ms. Desserts or think about Dean. And again, most importantly, I met my wife there. <laughs> so that's all I got. Not Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Well, here. Oh, okay, wait, I, I'm going to be slow. Because my granddaughter blew me out. So, I started Ms. Desserts before Brian, and I was, um, I was a teenager. And um, Eddie Zimmerman, yes. Alec Vera, and me. And Marlo Abishalom, yeah. yes, yes. And, and Mary, and, and we all worked the pastry table. and I didn't know what I was doing, but like, I'm a nurse. I, I was getting ready to go to nursing school and I never baked or did anything, but it was hands down the most fun job I've ever had. And I tell my kids, you know, you never know what feed, everything feeds your memory banks. And you never know what's gonna come out as decent and good. And when we talk about, you can't say Dean's name, I'm sure, without saying love. And it is true, I did meet the love in my life there. I was making shortbread heart cookies on a Saturday. And, and Dean said, I was, you know, kind of anal, like, I don't know how to dip them in chocolate. Does it matter on one half? Or how does it go? Do anything you want, whatever you think. I'm not artistic at all, so I, I had, that was my big creative moment. Brian, well, Brian was at the door, and he looked like he was 12. It was true. Pretty hairless. And I said, yeah. That's for me. I'll have that. And, um, and, you know, absolutely the most fun job ever. And it's so important to have those memories of enjoying coming in where it really was like a, like a family. And we did bad stuff. Ryan and I were like the bad kids. I got written up for Debbie. Debbie was throwing dough. Brian be like, bitch can't hit the six on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I can hit the six on the clock. I mean, you take dough and make it into balls and throw it at the clock. I never could hit the six. <laughs> then Nina wrote us uh, Nina wrote us up because Brian locked Deborah in the in the freezer oh my God, again. Nina. <laughs> she, was, she was screaming. I didn't care. We did we did then we would break product. Egg, egg like, toss. We'd break product so we could eat it. We'd like, oh, you can't sell those muffins. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. It was so good. And I don't have a picture of my kids' birthdays that didn't have a Mr. Zorn's cake in it. Everybody wanted it. It, it, was, it, it. So the passion that she had throughout her whole life, she just transformed it into this beautiful product that nourished us and it was so good and I feel like I'm better just having known her. Yeah. <laughs> 
ever since Ms. Desserts. I'm still in the food business. I manage lots of people, but it really all goes back to um, connecting with people and being able to see them and hear them and talk to them. And, and I think that sort of Dean was my teacher on how to do that when I was a young kid and just starting that business. So, uh, so I really appreciate her and everything she did. Thank you. <laughs> but I need to give a special thanks, shout out to the bakers. The project we put out was, I mean, Emma was, Emma had this vision. She was trying to think like her mom, and she said, I want all the cakes there. I'm like, yeah, you can't have all the cakes. And I'm thinking, and she said, well, I, I want a lot of them. I'm going to bake them. I'm like, you can't bake 20 cakes in, unless you have a big freezer or somewhere. So I started asking, and people rose to the occasion. And without a doubt, every I have extant emails full, and Shelly can account for some of them. Everybody had like, I don't really understand. Did she beat this by end? There's no direction. Bake <laughs> <laughs> like a cookie. <laughs> you know, um, do this. I said, are there chips on top? Uh, and in the because yes. she only had the ingredients yes. listed for just chips yes. enough for inside. Right. And that's like put a half a, a cup on top. And I'm like, well, that doesn't add up. <laughs> Emma was like, you have to read through Mom's recipes. I'm like, no. What Hap said last night is, I think she kept them that way. <laughs> they were her recipes. Yeah, she was glad stuff. that we've all made them, but while she had them, she wasn't writing them. <laughs> and so they were a challenge, and I want you to know, everybody has kept and written. I think the caramel apple icing, my friend Stuart, was too grainy. I mean, people who bake, I gave this to people who bake. And they were still Shelly, who used to put the. She's the one who translated the damn recipes from little to big, and she knew every. She'd be like, "Oh no, the mud. You, yeah, you definitely bring it to a boil, but remember this." And she still was like, "I don't think the mud worked." I'm like, really? <laughs> and, but it did. So my point is, they're all going to be great. They look beautiful. I didn't taste any yet because I didn't grab any ahead of time, as tempting as it was. But I want to give a special thought, shout out to the bakers. My friend Stuart is not here. He used to make crusts at the bakery, uh, peach crust, um, mm -hmm. and to Emma, and to Tess, to um, my uh, stepdaughter, Andy's daughter, Erica, who doesn't even know Dean, and never had a Miss Desserts in her life, mm -hmm. but said, I'll bake for you, and then said, I'm really up for this challenge, and I'm really scared. <laughs> 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 She's making blondies, but it was, you know, but, um, and to Andy, Colstad, to Ivy, um, mm -hmm. and to Shelly, and did I leave anybody out? Did anybody else bake? Gail? Thank Sorry, you. buddy. Sorry. Um, and um, it wasn't easy. And I think that um, everyone who did this, it was to honor Danny, not just because we all wanted the cake again. <laughs> and, it, and I really know she knows that and would love this. 
and I thank you, and we're going to partake in a minute, but I also want to thank my sister and my brother-in-law for giving me oh. such a good hour. <laughs> the two people have been setting up everything. Actually, you might know, Gary, Cindy worked for Kaplan's. And Cap, what was the other? They were vendors. The vending machine. With their Miss Desserts. They were my own aprons I gave them. Um, and uh, Cindy's been to every one of our family things. I think everything she does. Passover with us. She's come. She served my father coffee every single day, but it was never hot enough. Right? It was never hot. That's what right. she's talking about. Right. It had to be so, steaming hot. So she was used to dealing with our family already. <laughs> and she's, come, she's been here every time we do a big event. Um, showers and things, so I really appreciate that she oh, got this you. all thank together. Thank you for asking me to do it. And Great. what is the other business, the catering? Oh, Joe also? Cap Vending. Joe Cap Vending oh, is yes. still, but you do corporate <laughs> catering, right, yes. too? Yep. So, mm -hmm. just putting that plug out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank and, you. And we hadn't met her sister till today, so thank this you. Is Cindy. Yes. And if there, and just thank you all for coming, because this, oh my God, this would have made her so happy, yes. and it's also making all of us happy, instead of being sad, so thank you, and go eat cake. Okay. Yes. All right. Hey, oh, Tessa, oh, and I forgot to take the bottle, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay.